Hello everyone, this is Zook and this is the second episode of Zook's Art Emporium. But before we get into that bullshit, I wanted to talk a bit about what's been going on in my life. I haven't really posted anything in 30 days, almost, so I wanted to, to just show you my fabulous self for a little bit and, uh, and catch up on what's been happening. So out of those 30 days, 10 were actually spent on vacation. I drove around the country with... I, well, I didn't drive. My friend drove, but uh, we drove around the country. Um, visiting some historical monuments and uh, fortified churches in Romania, some fortresses, a bunch of cities, some good, some bad, mostly frustrated with people's laziness and inability to take care of what precious little historical relevance we have left throughout the country scattered. It's really annoying. It's really annoying when you see an entire country not give a fuck about the monuments it has and the potential money it could make off tourists and all that. It's just really stupid. But hey, it is what it is. And starting this Monday, I'm going to be going to Sweden for about 10 days. I'm going to be visiting an old, really old friend of mine that I met in WoW. It's that, actually that Swedish woman I've talked about a bunch of times. My first, uh, my first real romantic interest, I guess. But uh, not for that purpose now. We're going to be just hanging out and uh, cooking food and stuff. And she's married, so you know it's, it's nothing like that right now. But I uh, just thought I'd, I'd leave the country for a bit and go off and explore the world. Why, why not? And uh, starting with October, I'm going to be visiting Jenna and TB in uh, the US for a month. Uh, got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of uh, thin people activities. Now that both me and Jenna are significantly lighter, we can actually do things other than drive to restaurants and eat all the time, which was, is what we did for the most part both times I visited. Which is why I ended up as big as I fucking was to begin with. Holy shit. No more of that. We're going to be hiking. And we're going to be walking. And we're going to be walking with dogs. And we're going to be doing thin people shit. So it should be a bit better than the previous times, hopefully. And once I get back, I want to actually start uh, looking for an apartment seriously. Because I've been putting this off for a while. It makes no sense to get an apartment before I, I start traveling so hardcore. It's really pointless, so I'm just going to wait with that until um, the beginning of November. And uh, I wanted to do it even before, because the heat is just... When visiting apartments twice a day or three times a day, like the heat just kills you. It's insane. So I'm going to be doing it in the nice, uh, chilly temperature of fall, which should be significantly more pleasant. And that's basically it. You know, I've been, I've been practicing uh, painting a lot. I've been working on a lot of projects of mine that are not really stream worthy or they're just not that interesting. I had a huge backlog before I went on vacation, so I wanted to get some of those finished, hopefully before I, I travel so much again. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, I've been half lazy, half working. So that's basically why there, haven't, there hasn't been that much uh, content on the channel. But there will be, hopefully, when I... Um, Go to the US, I want to film some cooking videos because I'm going to make some some neat stuff. I'm going to I actually want to make some British food for TB. Try my hand at it, you know, stuff like steak and ale pie, fish and chips. I want to try and make those because um, I'm sick of cooking the same old, same old bullshit all the time. So it's time to experiment, to taste life, to live, live a bit, you know, with fish and chips. Guess it works. So that's pretty much it for my life. Now let's move on to the painting bit. All right, so this picture was sent in by Vito, who says he did it in Photoshop and he was trying to focus on details and surfaces, which is what I'm gonna actually tear down, unfortunately, for Vito. But let's start with what I do like. I like the leaves. <clears throat> I think from a dis... I mean, the, the whole point of this picture is, I guess, to look at it from a distance. Uh, the leaves are quite okay. Uh, the shape is, and the contrast is generally quite nice, but one thing I have a huge problem with is in this entire picture is the obscene amount of this yellow, white, blinding light that he used here. He used a, a soft uh, sort of brush, and this is a technique that's indeed used by people, but, I mean, Vito took it and fucking ran home with it, like, this is nuts here. You know, he used this to, like, sort of fade shit into the background. You know, to, to make it clear that it's in the background. But he used it literally all around the entire thing. I don't know, it's like God came down to focus his entire strength and power on this one tree. And it just, it it's not easy on the eyes, you know, this much white. Um, 
of course this would probably have like some faded sort of forest in the background you know some my like, desaturated trees or some other shit in there but not just not this much this much white light like this is nuts here i think it totally spoils the entire thing because he did all right like, it's not terrible but there are some problem areas which i'm gonna address and paint over this is the previous uh, video i made the episode one got a pretty positive response in the way i went about it which is to basically go into detail and talk about what i found to be a problem area and paint over it i decided to make the second one the same way until the point where i deem it necessary to address several pictures in one video but for now i'm just going to be focusing on this one so what's what are the problems um first off Vito used a lot of green and as i said before in a video where i was talking about it i read in a very um old not old uh, very well established art book a classical art book that people who want to illustrate green should not use the actual color green i can't exactly remember the motivation for it but it's just not an easy color to work with for some reason or there was some very good reason for it and it's true like all of the concept most of the concept artists that i've sampled and looked at um Indeed, when they want to illustrate the color green, they actually use a more desaturated orange, like something like this, or, you know, all the Blizzard guys, they use this sort of color scheme. Like most of their stuff is in this area, red to yellow. So it's all from actual orange, you know, desaturated, more saturated. It's all made from these colors. And it's interesting, you know, even the orcs, which are green, or the goblins, they are not actually green. They are more uh, the saturated kind of darker orange color. It's it's very interesting. So I guess the first thing, if you want to follow that advice, is to not use as much green. You now he went he went nuts here on the the grass and the moss and the, um, these grass bits here. Uh, there's just there's just too much of it. I think this is clear green here. So yeah, but I have a deficiency with my eyes and, you know, it's it's harder for me to notice these things. I have to actually technically uh, approach them, like actually sample the color and see where it's present in the picture. Yeah, okay. So I can actually detect a bit of green. I'm not totally colorblind, which is nice. And these are yellowish, but also towards green. This one here is going full on green. So yeah, I guess try and use more brown rather than green, just like different shades and tints of brown. That seems to work. Second problem. <clears throat> Was that the third? Pro no, third problem. Um, this kind of style that you're using is indeed a style that I've seen people like Feng Zhu use or a lot of concept artists. It, it seems like a very rushed, very dirty kind of, you know, multiple strokes from multiple directions kind of style. But they do it. It just looks better on them than it does on you. So I would suggest uh, as a beginner trying to not approach it in that way and focus more on clearly defining edges. This is, you know, this is a clear example. Like what you did here with this window is kind of, is kind of bad because you can't really see, like it look, just looks so dirty. You can't really tell what the different surfaces are and what's getting highlighted and what isn't. So yeah, it just looks like it got gnawed on by some sort of wild animal or something like that. So I guess focus first on defining these clear shapes, like the grates here on the, on the window and then you know the highlights and the shadows and stuff like that also here you can't really tell how how this whole thing is put together like what these what these things are and what they're made of and how they combine into this whole ensemble here attached to this tree so you know this sort of stuff here like this highlight is all kind of meh colored i guess he's trying to play off the white blinding light but i would have used less highlight like half the fucking tree basically this entire thing is highlighted here and it just it's a bit much i think and the, just do a better job at defining these kinds of th uh, kinds of things like i can't really tell what these shapes are and how they're attached to this whole this is a, some sort of spiral thing but where does this go like what is what is going on here this is some ornament on the roof here which i guess goes like this but this part is getting lost into the background um this doesn't have highlights from the window to show that it's indeed coming in front oh, this whole bit here should also be highlighted if it is indeed this shape i can't really tell 
this whole thing would be receiving light. Also, the light from these windows, it's this... It really hurts to look at it. It's this sort of blue-green thing, very saturated blue-green thing. I've never seen this color being used. Like, there is no l natural light or artificial light that would be this color, except some crazy 80s neon sort of uh, contraption, you know. So, I mean, if you went with white-yellow for the entire background, you might as well have gone with uh, with yellow over here, too. I just think, like, a, a warm yellow light just looks better on the eyes rather than, than this uh, blue-green thing. I guess he went, I don't know, his motivation. He went for the contrast thing, but ah, it hurts. It honestly hurts to look at. So, yeah, drop the blue-green thing. This is very messy overall here. Like, I can't really tell, for example, this thing, how it attaches to the roof. Like, how does it... I guess this is the separation, but how does it attach to the tree? Like, this entire area is just blur. You can't really tell what's going on here. Is it like this? No, I guess not. It should be like some some something like this, if we're to respect the perspective. It's just weird. Like, it looks weird how it comes together here. I can't really tell. Also, the, you know, since they're, I guess the main light source is in the background, I suppose. But there's also another light source coming from somewhere here. Since this little platform is casting a shadow on the tree here, this little thing is casting another shadow. He also went with um, another soft airbrush and, like, highlighted this entire object with blue and it just looks or that greenish thing and it just looks off same here this entire thing he just went with the brush over it uh same here <laughs> he took he took a different brush for this one he took like a grungy sort of dot brush and just went went to town on it um yeah so i guess work on better defining these edges and surfaces this is like a key thing that people should should do when they they try to draw something so complex is make sure you, you can actually define the edges properly and and the shapes and show the viewer how this whole thing is is coming together and how it's put together because it's just when you know when the human eye detects something that it can't understand it it becomes irritating it's trying to figure out like okay how does this whole thing come together here and when you can't figure it out it's just it's annoying to look at you know this roof is also a bit crooked. Not that I'm helping it in any way. But yeah. What else? Uh, the cracks on the tree. I think they're a bit lazy-ish. Uh, you know, all of these will have some sort of highlighted um, edge here to show that it's being hit by some sort of light and they will have a darkened edge on the on the bottom to show that there is no light. It's just... Yeah, you can do these really quick, but it really helps a lot in defining the the cracks better. Even from a distance, see, like it's clearly noticeable that it is a crack. And of course, if you want to go by uh, Blizzard's logic, after this highlight, it should be darker, fading into less dark, you know, you see? And of course, the actual highlight, if you want to get really detailed, will be on this edge. It just looks neat when you do it like this. It looks cool. You know, make it scratchy. Give it some some bullshit. Give it give it some like cracks or cuts or stains. You know, just do something like this. There's a lot of stuff you can detail with that's really fast and it looks good from see even like that one piece pops out from the rest of it just because I did these three shits to it. Took just a few seconds, you know. So you can go about this with the whole thing, you know, just like separate separate these big ass bits of wood here. Yeah. Define the the highlighted um, surfaces a bit better. Yeah. And the shadowed ones a bit better. But I'm gonna get into this in the overpainting process. Okay, and then just give these a little highlight wherever you want. Something like like this to just define the the shape. Give it some cracks. There's, it's you can play with a lot of stuff here, and of course alternate. Like don't make the entire thing the same color. You know, some some bits are supposed to be darker, some lighter. See, so, yeah, it just makes it pop from a distance. It works. 
uh, on this branch. Like this is uh, this is terrible here. This branch, um, very lazy cracks, very poorly defined detail here. I'm gonna get a lot of flack again from the viewers to say that I'm just shitting on it. Like, I talked about the good stuff. It's cool. Um, yeah, this could have been. I guess he was almost done here and he got lazy. I know that. I know that feel, bro. Don't worry. I do the same thing with mine. When I'm towards the end, it's like fuck this. I'm done. CBA anymore. But it's important because this is. I guess how would the eyes go from when I look at the picture? First thing I see are these because they're together. These two windows, like this, is a, a crowded area, and then I guess the eye just goes like this, kind of. At least mine, this way. So this branch would have actually been quite important because this is also um, it's kind of standalone here. So you know, this is a different color, and this is a different color. So this kind of stands out contrast-wise. But hey, maybe I'm just talking shit. Who knows? But that's how I see it. Like I, this branch just bothers me. It could have been done better. Oh, another problem with the, these rocks here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you ignored the possibilities that you had with the rocks. You can actually do a lot of stuff with these. If you define these cracks better, to just to make the picture more interesting. This is something that I've seen a lot in the Hearthstone art style. Like they do this. Just define the cracks better. Same thing with the wood. You know, give him a, the surface that's not going to be in the light. Make it a bit darker. Uh, something like that. The surface that will be in the light. Brighten that shit up. Give it some highlight on the edges here. Eh, something like this. Of course, not with uh, this much saturation here. It's a bit much. Go towards this. Uh, that's better. And then you can start fucking around with the different planes of the rock. So you have like one plane here. And then you grab this color just to show that it's it's going down like this. And then you draw another highlighted bit. And you can just make it just really interesting to look at from a distance. And then you, you give the edges some highlights, right? Because they're sharp and whatever. Something like this. And you can even start uh, scribbling about just to give it some sort of semblance of texture. And it just it just makes it look interesting rather than drawing just uh, an empty line, right? Also here, you know, like obviously these are these will be hit by the light, so you draw a little bit of highlight on them, and then you start separating different planes. You give them this sort of uh, gradation on them, you know, and it it starts to make them pop out in three D rather than just be like a dirty scribble. But you know, like, don't uh, don't get offended or anything. This is just just how I see it, right? Like, this is the whole point of this whole thing. Same thing with this here. You can do something like that, and just dirty it up. You know, you can don't need to keep it as clean as I did. Let's give it a bit of texture. You know, this would be like this. See, and when you zoom out, it just looks more interesting compared to this bit here, for example. At least I think it does. Yeah, so you can you can do a lot with these rock type formations just to to give some uh, something interesting for the viewer to look at. Also, you can <clears throat> since this I guess is the main area where the action happens, you can fade these away a bit into not as much contrast. And same here. Just lighten these until it loses most of its contrast. And so the main focus will be in the actual central area. And you can even do it newbie style, like I sometimes do it. And just grab a, something like color dodge or whatever. And just give this whole area a bit more bang. Maybe not with that much uh, yellow, green. But you know, just amplify the contrast in this area. So the eye looks here, and you know, this is obviously is going to be the central point. This is also another pretty highlighted area. And it just, yeah, basically makes it look more interesting. These these stairs here, I don't know what ha what's happening here. Again, it's one of the situations where the, the shapes are just not very well defined. So I'm not entirely sure how these steps are supposed to look like. A bit too nuts with the 
the white highlight like this is probably wood or stone so i would imagine it doesn't shine that brightly really in any circumstance so you would have you know just the edges boom like that then you can give it a bit of color if uh, if it's wood i'll just make it like a bit more saturated here i mean you can take a lot of uh pictures that have wood in them drawn painted by by uh, like hearth backs of hearthstone cards are really good for inspiration stuff like that and just look kind of what the colors they use for wood and take that kind of inspiration cuz these very bright white yellow thing it just it's too much of it man not even taking into account that the entire background is is that color it's just like it doesn't need any more in here this is way too strong so that's pretty much it for the intro i guess i'm gonna paint over it and uh, address the finer details and that'll be that so let's get to it so now i'm gonna do the overpainting bit and i'm starting with that roof thing on the right just better defining all the planes the different planes like reinforcing the the flat shapes which doesn't need don't need that much color variation in them or stroke variation in them like you can have just a flat surface once in a while be flat and it's fine uh, better defining the grates and the edge of that window uh the light shining on that interior part of the roof needed a bit of work as well so i kind of adjusted that and yeah but mainly the stage is about like just better defining the overall shape and it's going to look out of place once i'm done with it because it's resting on a surface that isn't the same way i added, also added a bit of like wood texture to the roof just so it's not like a a flat thing with nothing on it and uh, you know, just applying like small highlights to that tower-looking thing, little whatever the fuck it's called, little tower thing, and um, simplifying a lot of the <clears throat> the highlights and shadows that he put there. And now I'm working on the rocks. What I said before, like this is a platform to just make things much more interesting to the eye. And I'm getting spammed on Skype there a little bit, but it's fine. And so yeah, just defining each um, highlighted and shadowed edge, applying very subtle highlights to the corners, and then fading it off with a multiply uh, brush into the distance, basically, or into the shadow, and just focusing on that central area to just better define those different planes and rocks and apply various highlights to them. And you can see even now it looks, I just think it looks so much better. And I'm also drawing some strands of grass with a highlight on them to just break that flat edge there not not have it um, so so well defined actually because you don't want to have that with with stuff like rocks and stuff that's overlapping and doing the same thing on the other side <clears throat> just making different planes for the rocks to show that they're all busted up and broken there's a lot of room to play around with this sort of stuff and just form your hand at drawing these like they come in really handy knowing how to make stuff like this and that other part now i'm fading into a, a lighter lighter color because I, I don't want it to be the same thing now I'm working on these stairs here just again better adjusting the the overall shape of the handle and the rail and the individual individual steps where the fuck did that come from um, making those a more realistic wood color with all the cracks and all the edges and stuff and not having them so blindingly yellow white I'm not really sure how these stairs fit into the picture they kind of look copy paste it on top of it like there's no structure holding them on top of those rocks like the, the perspective is off but i'm not going to address that because that'll get fixed in time obviously but i just wanted to focus on the details since that's what the main the main point of this picture was also drawing some moss and strands of grass there with a very subtle highlight on them it just makes things interesting like it busies up that entire area now i'm working on this other platform thing and as i said like drawing the the things which are supposed to be lit by that weird disgusting uh, yellow not yellow uh, green, green blue light also remembering the different shadows like the central rail is going to cast a shadow on that little window sill the roof is going to cast a shadow on the supporting pillars and whatnot <laughs> just little these little de details uh the hole or the entrance into the treehouse also needed a bit of defining because it just was red like, i don't know why he chose that color or maybe that's dark brown and i can see it properly no it looks red looks overly red but i left the red in there and just darkened the the back part of it and just better reinforce the idea that it's leading into the inside of the tree and now i'm gonna take that entire branch which i've been which i've been complaining about since the beginning and just 
completely paint over it because it irritates me. And just, I guess this was, this was meant as an example to show like how I would do it. Uh, instead of focusing so much on those insane highlights, uh, it's better to just create an interesting texture within. And, you know, to, to have the color variation and to show that a part is closer to the viewer and a part is further away, you can just use a, that trick I did with a, a brush set to color dodge and just use the same color or something a bit more desaturated and highlight the areas that are going to be close to uh, the viewer and multiply, use multiply mode for the areas that are going to be further away. So now I'm using a, a more saturated lighter brown for the top part and a more desaturated brown for the bottom part because that's going to be facing the, the ground basically. But at the same time, the light is going to be bouncing off that grass. So I'm going to be also using a bit of more saturated uh, lighter brown towards orange just to show that the light from... Uh, from the grass is bouncing on the underside of the branch just little things but what i'm mostly focusing on is creating that bark texture not going too nuts on the details just kind of focusing on on uh see what i'm doing there like i used um, color dodge again to just brighten up that big uh, curvy part and now i'm just applying some very subtle highlights on the bottom and on the top nothing like what Vito did with with the white highlight it doesn't need to be that white you can just achieve the same effect with lines and it looks much neater. So I'm using a desaturated uh, gray on the underside and um, a brighter color on the top side. And it's just from a distance and from close up, it just looks, I think, much, much better. So that's going to be it, what I'm going to be uh, doing on this picture. Hopefully it's been useful to you guys. And uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.